In this video, I am going to provide you with an example of what the door, the trim, and the floor trim would look like if you have one layer of flooring. And something like this can often be found in new construction, where we have a door, the door jam, the trim, all looking good without any problems. But that's not going to be the case after a few years of adding additional flooring. And that might not seem like much of a problem when you're looking at this where we have two additional layers of flooring on top of the original flooring and the floor trim might have been moved however the door and the door trim would have been cut or should I say is often cut as you add additional layers of flooring and that's all going to be fine and dandy until someone comes in and says we've got to start removing some of this flooring to install the next layer of flooring. And that decision can arrive from a variety of different reasons. However, this is usually what you're going to end up with. And the floor trim is usually not going to be that big of a deal. However, the door, the door jam, and the door trim might be. As you can see here, and now that we've gotten all of that out of the way and you have a pretty good idea why I'm making this video, let's go ahead and start with my first repair suggestion. And that will be to remove all of the affected trim so that it can either be replaced or lowered along with the door and the door jam. However, before we do that, I want to make you aware that you could have some discoloration, damage, or even damage the finished wall when removing the trim. And of course, that would depend upon what was used either behind or around the trim, like caulking. And I myself have removed a trim like this and ripped a large section of the paint off. And that can usually be avoided by running a razor knife around the perimeter here before removing any of the trim. So keep that in mind, the discoloration and damage could be a problem. However, that can usually be solved by installing larger trim. So let's just go ahead and install the trim here to give you an idea what it might look like before and after, because this could be a problem if we lower the door without refinishing the wall or installing a larger piece of trim. So all you're going to need to do here is get something like a Sawzall and cut Cut around the perimeter of the door in between the jam and the framing and that will usually be all you need to do to remove a door however I would strongly suggest getting a flashlight and inspecting the area in between the door jam and the wall framing if you can to make sure that nobody has installed any electrical wires in that area or something else that is going to add additional unnecessary repairs to your project and after you have lowered the door, you can install your new door trim. And this is what I meant by installing larger trim that will cover the additional gap here and any damage or discoloring like we have here around the entire perimeter of the door and the floor. And along with this repair suggestion, I would also like to add that this is probably going to be the most expensive repair in all of my examples because you're removing and replacing all of the trim. However, if you do not like that idea, let's go ahead and leave the door where it originally was and try and fill the gaps below with some type of wood. And you can realistically use whatever you want in this area to fill it because something like this is usually going to be out of the line of sight of most people who walk through your home. And my guess is it's rarely going to be noticed, even if you don't do that good of a job. So my first suggestion would be to cut a board something like this that would be even with the front of the jam and even or flush with both sides of the jam on each side. However, you can shove it as far back as you want. There's usually going to be a gap between the jam and the framing. And I would suggest shoving it back. It doesn't have to be tight. Maybe about a sixteenth of an inch gap here is going to be fine. And you could even have a sixteenth of an inch gap at the top here that can be filled with some type of a sealant, adhesive, or caulking. And after you have the block positioned where you want it to be, mark the top of it with a pencil so that it can be shaped accordingly. Now something else I need to point out is that working with a small piece of wood like this might not be safe to cut and shape, especially with a saw or table saw. So this idea right here 
can be replaced by using two pieces of lumber, something like this, and then using some type of a sealant or adhesive to fasten everything securely together. And for something like this, you might not even need any nails. However, if you do use any nails or screws, I would recommend pre-drilling the holes to avoid splitting the wood. And if you cut these blocks a little bit smaller, you can simply add some adhesive to the bottom or the top and the sides and then install the blocks and you can kind of squish them right in there and then let them dry and if for whatever reason you have it sticking out a little bit you might be able to fill any spots like that with some type of filler or spackle however I wouldn't suggest doing that until a few days later after everything is dried and these are no longer moving and if both this piece and this piece are the same size you might be able to install a piece of trim underneath everything and then maybe fill the gap here with caulking or some type of a filler or leave it alone if it looks fine to you. However, if these two boards are a different size, then you might need to cut a block separately for this and separately for this one here. Next up on the list would be leaving the original trim and then finding a piece that is close enough or exactly the same that can be used to fill this area here along with a piece of trim that will fill the area underneath your floor trim. So this one right here would not involve removing anything and can be done by simply filling all of these areas with small pieces of wood that might need to be shaped to fit. However, if you don't like this idea, you can always install a filler piece and another piece of trim over that. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So that's all we've done here is added a different piece of trim to provide another type of detail that might look better than the one on the other side. And this usually needs to be shaped at the corner here. And that can be done by simply cutting a 22 and a half or 45 degree angle. And even though it might not look super awesome, this is the way most trim installers do it. In our next example, we will install a wood block to provide another detail, something else to think about, and allow this piece of trim to butt into it instead of miter into the corner. And of course, you can always use a larger piece of trim or move it over to be flush or even with the door jam. And in this example, I extended the other side a little bit to provide you with another detail. In the next example, I went ahead and brought it back a little bit and then made this a little smaller so that the lower trim could run through. And again, you could always stop this miter right here at the edge to provide you with another detail. And you might even be able to buy something pre-made with some type of a design in it or even make these yourself depending upon your level of woodworking skills. And here's something else I've done before. I've shaped a block to fit over the damaged area and then filled all of the gaps with caulking. And again, since this is not a highly visible area, then something like this might be acceptable. So again, this is just simply a block that would be shaped around the trim area instead of cutting the trim. So something like this. And of course, that would cover up this area here if you don't want to cut the trim. And I understand some people don't want to cut the trim, but at the same time, it might be difficult for them to create a shaped block like this if you don't have the right tools. Next up on the list, let's go ahead and attach something to the bottom of the door. And that's simply going to be another shaped piece of lumber. And sometimes you're going to be able to use screws to attach this to the bottom of the door. And sometimes you will need to use adhesive depending upon your door. For example, if you have a solid core door, something that is solid wood, then this won't be a problem. However, if you have a hollow core door, it could be a problem. And if that's the case, you might need to plane a layer of paint if there is any paint off of the bottom of the the door and then use some type of an adhesive to attach the trim to the bottom of the door. And again, take a look at everything that we have here because if this doesn't look good, 
then I would advise going back to our first example where you're going to remove and lower the door or remove and replace everything, the door included. However, don't forget to finish watching the rest of the video because you might find another idea, like adding a piece of trim to the front of the door. Now, it doesn't need to be this thick, and it can always be decorative trim to where it shapes something like your floor trim. And of course, it can be smaller or longer. However, you need to make sure that whatever you put on isn't going to create a problem when you open and close the door. Or in other words, isn't going to be hitting the trim or allowing you to open the door all the way. Which means you might need to cut an angle on it like we have here or make it a little shorter on the end. So on this side here, it might not need to be shorter, but on the other side, it is going to need to be shorter. Otherwise, when you go to shut it, it's going to hit the door jam. So on this side of the door, it's gonna to need to be shorter. The width of this part of the door jam Otherwise, the door won't be able to shut all the way. So a little bit shorter, maybe an eighth of an inch on both ends. Otherwise, like I said, you're not going to be able to shut the door. And hopefully that makes sense there. Again, kind of uh, saving you a few problems that uh, you could run into if you're not thinking about this and you want to add some type of a trim to the bottom of the door. Next up, let's go ahead and add a shaped piece of lumber on the bottom. And this would be a piece of lumber that would kind of notch around the door. However, again, this method right here is going to require a little more tools and a lot more work. So just another idea. And again, we are leaving a gap here so that we're not going to hit the door jam on the inside. Another idea would be to install some type of a panel over this area. And again, you could always install some type of trim around it. And you could always use a piece of metal that's sold specifically for doors. And what this piece of metal is usually going to be found under will be some type of a kick plate for the door. And you might see something like this installed in an area where people are in wheelchairs and use their feet to push open the doors. And in my last example, you can always get a door bottom extender. And these come in a variety of different designs, shapes, and lengths, and usually attach with screws to the door and are often thin enough to where you don't need to notch around the door jam. However, that's going to depend upon your door jam or whether or not any of these ideas are going to work for you. Now, don't forget, you can get creative. You can use a combination of these. And when it comes to trim ideas, they are all over the Internet. So check out some of the other ideas that might make your door and your floor trim look a little nicer than it currently does.